There's a rule of thumb a lot of the old pilots use for navigation, which is still helpful to know about in the GPS age. It's called the 1 in 60 rule and helps in keeping our aircraft on course and correcting for navigation errors. Here we have a sectional chart in northeastern Colorado. Let's have a look at the Akron VOR. You can see the VOR symbol and station identifier here. Let's also look at this Victor airway off the VOR on the 050 radial. Let's say our starting point is over the Akron VOR DME and we want to fly outbound along that Victor airway, a course of 050 degrees. We'll have our VOR receiver set up and twist to 050. Notice the needle centered and the from flag indicated. As we fly out along the radial, the needle stays centered. After a while and still on the radial, we have a look at the DME and see that we're 37 miles from the VOR. At this point, we're going to encounter a crosswind from our right side, which will blow us off the radial. As this happens and we deviate away from the airway, notice the needle swing to the right. By the time our DME tells us we're 60 miles from the VOR, the needle is deflected to the right by one half dot. It's halfway between the center and that first dot. Each dot represents two degrees of deviation. So this indicates that we're off the radial by one degree. Now, what the 1 in 60 rule tells us is that one degree of deviation, 60 miles from the station, equates to being one nautical mile off track. If we take the same rule and now push the airplane out to two degrees of deviation, where the needle is on that first dot, we'll be two miles off track. At four degrees, we're four miles off. And at a Kevin Bacon six degrees of separation, we're six miles off track. So the rule tells us that at 60 miles out, each degree of separation equates with being one mile off course. We can apply the same rule to other distances. That same six degrees off at only 30 miles from the station now equates with being only three miles off track. We cut the distances in half. So how can we use this in flight? Let's say we start at our point of origin over the Akron VOR and fly a heading at 050 to track the radial towards some point of interest 60 miles away. But that crosswind pushes us off course. The wind is strong enough to push us five degrees off our course, which is why the needle is at two and a half dots on the receiver. It's the same degree of deviation the whole way, although the distance we are off track by is getting longer. When we're at 30 DME, we take a moment to reassess. The 1 in 60 rule tells us that 5 degrees of separation at 30 miles away equates with being off track by 2.5 miles. If, at this point, we made no correction and stayed on our 050 degree heading and the wind was unchanged, we'd continue on our 5 degree deviation and get further and further away in distance from our track. Not what we want, obviously, so we're going to need to turn into the wind, right? The VOR tells us we're 5 degrees off, so we turn right five degrees to chase the needle. This is better, but with that wind blowing, all we're doing is flying parallel to our desired course. We're still going to fly past our destination and that needle will never quite center up. So we need to correct not just for the wind, but for the error we've already flown in the first leg of the flight. We're a perfect halfway point to our destination, so we correct five degrees for the first half and five degrees for the second half to a heading of zero six zero degrees. As we fly out, the needle will start to move towards center, and by the time we reach 60 miles on the DME, we'll be back on track and over our destination. Let's examine each of these tracks and see if we can find a way to apply the 1 in 60 rule to more complicated examples. The first turn we made from 50 to 55 degrees was compensating for our track error, which was 5 degrees. And that second turn to 0, 060 degrees covered our correction angle. The two angles together, the full 10 degree turn, was our total correction. For those of us who don't mind a bit of math, here's how we find track error and correction angle. Track error is the product of how many miles off track we are in 60, divided by the number of miles already flown. Correction angle is the product of how many miles off track we are in 60, divided by the number of miles left to fly. Let's look at an example. We want to fly along the radial to get to an airport that lies in its path. We start out and after a while we see that we're four miles left of course. We could reckon this visually if we didn't have VOR on board. We also know we've flown 20 miles from our origin and have 60 miles left. Let's first find the track error. 
we find it will be 240 divided by 20, which gives us 12 degrees. If we had VOR, it'll show the needle at full deflection since our error is more than 10 degrees. Remember, if all we do is make that 10 degree correction, we'll be flying along that gray dotted line parallel with our course and pass by our destination. So we'll also need to turn our correction angle, which is going to be 240 divided by 60, 4 degrees. Turning the combination of the 12 and 4 degrees will put us on a course to re-intercept the radial just as we arrive at our destination airport. Now, of course, your modern GPS will by and large do this for you. You see here on the GTN 650 that because of wind, we've been blown off course about four miles, just like in the example. In order to correct to fly towards our destination, now 60 miles away, we can fly the track indicated in the bearing, BRG field. Flying that bearing track will do the same thing for us as the correction we calculated earlier. So it's a great tool to help correct for errors. So yeah, the GPS does the work, but I think it's very valuable to have at least a mental picture of what corrections need to look like so you can be on the same page with what it's telling you. And the 1 in 60 rule is a great way to keep your head in the game. If this was helpful, please click subscribe so that you could stay up to date on every new training video coming out each Tuesday and Friday and get access to posts and articles that'll take your training even further. It just takes one click and it's so worth it.